We're gonna look at three different replays at three different MMRs of people playing Monkey King. This first one is Guardian 6, then we'll be looking at a Legend 7, and finally an Immortal player. So straight away here, the enemy is coming playing aggressive onto the rune. This is an offlane Monkey King with the Undying. He focuses one target with his Jinju Mastery, which is pretty much the right thing to do, but realizes see the enemy have too much armor and he doesn't have enough damage to kill them. So here he's not using a tango and he's actually going to get kind of punished here for not having a salve either. The Quelling Blade is kind of useless. In this scenario you end up seeing that Undyne now has to fight alone and Undyne is really strong against two strength heroes and ends up like getting first blood and even with that he played so afk there watching his teammate get the kill he ended up missing the first creep wave which is literally makes your quelling blade option as your first item very questionable overall and you can buy the quelling blade in the side shop which is the biggest benefit meanwhile because undying now has wasted his salve he has to go back to the fountain to heal this makes Monkey King really susceptible and lane to harass like this and you end up seeing that he nearly ends up dying. However, he's literally nearly out of regen and if this was like a slightly more harassed lane, he probably would be out of regen a lot sooner. So here ends up being that the enemy don't focus the tomb and they're really underestimating Monkey King being kind of strong here as well. And Undyne is literally like stomping them really hard in the lane. And Monkey King is going to buy some item now. He's waiting in the shop. He can't decide what to buy. He probably should have bought boots there. But now is he going to die? Yes, he did. So being kind of hesitant there and wasting too much time in the shop. Ended up getting him killed very quickly. So if he gets hit again, he's literally giving Monkey King like free regen back up to lifesteal with. But also causes like an enormous amount of harass here to Sven. And they end up splitting to focus two different targets. And I think Monkey King is really focusing the more valuable target here. Slarder is kind of the one farming it seems like. Because he's 10 last hits. And if we look at like what's actually happening to the enemy here. And this pressure that's being put in. Slarder has no regen left. And Sven is walking back to the fountain to regen. Gen. Even though their shrine is available in 10 seconds, uh, Sven's bought like 3 more tangos to survive in lane. So now Monkey King hit level 5, he's after leveling up his tree dance. Now this gives him like nice little bit of vision here and you end up seeing he will go for them aggressive here. Undying gets a decay stack first and maximum duration leap here so that he gets a long duration slow. Oh the disaster of the tombstone broke the trees as he jumped back into it. And he ends up getting stunned by Slarder here. But they don't focus the tombstone at all. Instead they're focusing on Dine, which is not really a valuable target. And Monkey King gets his charges back up. And he's focusing one target, which is Sven, with a more valuable kill. And at the same time, Slarder was tanking the creep wave, which is not like very good. Like pretty much like the enemy making mistakes here. And Monkey King punishing it pretty well. So Monkey King's in the trees here. The enemy can see him jumping here. He's literally just jumping across the tree line in their vision. And the enemy know like he's top, yet they decide to go aggressive onto Undyne. He goes for a max duration channel on the primal spring again. And he's going for an ulti here as well. If he probably just like focused on doing attacks there onto Sven, he probably would have got the four charges. Instead he's going focusing Sven really hard, gets a kill on Sven, but Either way, that worked out okay. However, Slider is now getting two bashes on him. He got the first bash and the first attack, but it ends up being that now Monkey King's in a problem. He's also been seen by Bloodseeker's Thirst, but a pretty big thing here to note is that if he had bought a stick prior to this, even if he got like three or four charges on the stick, it would have like massively helped him in terms of like trying to fight that slarder. It literally would have been the difference between him getting the kill and escaping and the difference between him now just dying. So Monkey King's after picking up an invis rune and he's coming looking for a kill here on slarder. And he really needs to find heroes on his own. So it's good that he isn't going straight in on the enemy like this. And you end up seeing three of them. Now he ends up leaping here. And jumps into the Bloodseeker's AoE silence. And this is not very good. He also nearly got like stunned by Undyne's tomb. Like breaking the trees. Overall this game Monkey King's actually been farming quite fast. He's nearly at the highest amount of last. Uh, he gets a little bit ahead on last hits here in front of the Luna. And you end up seeing that his movement around the map is actually quite like good for farming for a guardian level and this is 
definitely one of his strengths this game and it's not something that I've showed often like so far yet but he has been doing this quite often even though he's also been involved in a lot of kills so his transition overall between when to farm and when to fight is actually been pretty good and this is what's resulted in allowing him to get a BKB now so here Undyne is here to help as well and they get a really nice monkey king ulti he cast it from the high ground and also the tomb is up on the high ground as well and with the BKB here, it's really hard for them to fight into this Monkey King. He's uh, super strong and he's getting a massive peak point at this point. But their enemy are still running towards him and trying to fight him, which is uh, relatively stupid. You want to back off at that point there. And he is affected by Thirst right now. This is kind of a silly position that he's in. He doesn't have an easy way to regen back up here. And Bloodseeker <laughs> nearly caught him there. He was very close to getting caught there. So he's going for a fight here and this is like pretty stupid on his own that's not smart at all he literally gave away 1400 gold oh wow that's not good so now monkey king is going agonims and what's kind of weird about this is he's bought two of these items first and he has no buyback at the same time and these item slots are literally doing nothing by having them in your backpack and it ends up being that Bane goes and plays aggressive here for some reason. Two of his allies are dead and he's just trying to harass Slardar. Very stupid decision by Bane there and Monkey King tries to save him. Either way, Monkey King's now running away. So now I want to pause it here and Sven's after blinking in and there's a couple of things Monkey King can do. He can BKB which will guarantee save him and prevent him from getting a stun. Two, he can use Mischief and dodge the damage from the Sven stun but Sven's stun is still going to actually stun Monkey King instead what happens is Monkey King goes to jump into the trees you can see the animation here it also goes on cooldown for three seconds and it's still on cooldown and it ends up being that now Bloodseeker gets a rupture off and now BKB is later and that BKB timing was really bad here and he ends up running really far away and Bloodseeker's damage is pure so he ends up taking like so much damage here he ran a little bit too far and he's even missing attacks because of bloodseeker's radiance and that was a pretty stupid even not only to like react with tree dance first but also to run so far while ruptured and he doesn't have buyback because of these two items that literally do nothing idle in his backpack so this is a pretty big mistake and almost costing them a lane of racks here but is luna gonna carry them here now luna's come with a big ult and that's just about saving Monkey King's pretty big mistake here. So Monkey King got haste here now. He's up in the trees. He gets a good ult off here. And he also activates his BKB. He gets a stun out only on one hero here. He could have hit two, but it's a really good ult overall. And even Bane catching with his ult at the end. This tree dance is kind of like unneeded here. Is it going to make a difference between him getting a kill or not? Nope. And Bane ends up dying. But it ends up being that Monkey King's the only one to survive. If he got a good stun there uh, during that fight on like even two heroes, it could have been the difference between another hero surviving that fight. It ends up being easier to push high ground and get like more building. At the same time, what he's doing here is kind of stupid. There's no middle racks at all. And well, two enemies buyback. But he could have went and got like a couple of attacks into the bottom tier three. He ends up baiting Sven to use his ulti. And typically when you have the creeps on mid, you can just push the other lanes and hit the towers there once you've broken backdoor protection. So at least Monkey King went and tried to push towers there and force them to buy back. Now Sven is totally out of position just straight after buying back. And Storm catches him, which is pretty nice. Sven even uses his BKB here. And Monkey King just has enough damage. If he could have got like a bash there from the bash he didn't get one unfortunately. But it could have been like the difference between him having more items, having this desolator really helped him get that kill there. But either way now they're getting Roshan and Sven is dead for 2 minutes. So it's a pretty good way now that they can go and push high ground and potentially a game losing like play there by Sven. Them coming high ground here like he has an invis rune on monkey and he doesn't really know who to focus here. And it's literally his ult doing a lot of damage here and there's a lot of BKBs as well but Bloodseeker dies. Literally Luna has a ton of damage right now and the fact that they're fighting 4v5 is very beneficial to them. They are literally just won the game straight off of that like catching Sven there and Monkey King played a pretty big role in order to help his team win here. So now we're looking at a Legend 7 Monkey King 
And what's important to note here is that in the previous game there was four melee heroes. This time there's only one melee and there's a viper who can break his passive and you also have sniper sharp to get vision into the trees. It's also harder getting harassed and laying a lot by this Skyra. He very quickly picks up a stick in the side shop and he's also picking up charges here onto Raid King and this allows him to regen back up and Skyra even tanking the creep wave a little bit stupidly there but it ends up being up where it might have been a better choice maybe to get six tangos because this harass is going to be continuously coming out even just raking stun in itself because you have a cm aura that's going to constantly be regening them up it'll also be really important to cancel skyrat's clarities and you end up seeing here's an opportunity to cancel the clarity his stun has a really long range so you can cancel the clarity during this time however he waits like literally about maybe four five seconds where he could have canceled the clarity a little bit more now here you end up seeing raking gives him another four charges which is pretty stupid and it allows like all it pretty much negating skyrat's harass here by getting these charges up and monkey king again is getting another four charges onto raid king he could have even cut the tree there to make sure that he got like vision of raid king made it a little bit easier and skyrat just dies to first blood and a lot of that is actually raid king's mistakes that are being punished here very well by the monkey king so now he's picked up a rape and, and a blightstone. He ends up diving the tower here, but notice how he clicks on the ground. He doesn't take tower aggro. This is a pretty straightforward thing, but he ends up here just simply getting a kill onto Skyrath. So they're pressuring this tower here, and you end up seeing he pushes the wave quite aggressively because Ray King's back in the jungle. And CM is after teleporting top and killing this ward. So now they don't have very good vision here, and line is in a pretty bad position right now. When playing against a Raid King, his stun is actually quite potent for getting a kill. And as you see, it exactly happens here. And Monkey King is trying to save him. He gets rooted now, trying to get the fourth attack. And he lifesteal is back up to full health because he got the stun onto two heroes for the maximum amount of lifesteal. He's taking two tower hits, a third one, and a fourth one that's roughly 400 damage and Raid King's stun almost kills him here. And just a stick to regen back up. And that stick has been really effective here. And you see Line is back in action again. He's respawned already. And if you look at what's happening here now, Raid King is getting focused. So Monkey King should be literally dying at this point because there's a Skyrat. And if we look at where like Skyrat actually is, he's standing in the trees back here. And when reincarnation happens this is when you counter initiate and monkey king should just be dead here now at this moment even before that but skyrat has walked back to the tower for some bizarre reason and monkey king is able to come here and even go further on to raid king now monkey king should have just backed there and he could have survived but now all skyrat has to do is use one or two spells and monkey king just dies right it's very simple and even line commits further position as well and dies here that could have been a much easier cleanup for the enemy team yet as well monkey king even though they made the skyrat made a big mistake of not following up on reincarnation he could have easily escaped from that so now again he's trying to pressure to go for this tower and you see line is in an almost identical position to last time ray king starts with the stun here and monkey goes aggressive then gets the four charges up he throws out a stun, gets his two heroes, and he goes quite greedily here to get the kill. Now, he does get a lot of gold for that kill, 450 gold, but he literally dies the exact same way as he did last time to the same three heroes you see Lion getting picked off. And overall, between those two deaths, that's 950 gold in 90 seconds he's given away to the enemy team. I don't think he realizes how high his net worth is and that's what's really making these trades not so great. He's also giving away a lot of experience which is probably like the bigger factor. Sniper is bottom and Monkey King is just farming here and he goes up into the trees again and he's waiting for Sniper to show. Now at this point he can see Viper's mid, he can see Skyrat's mid and Crystal Maiden and also Raid King is up top of the map. So this ends up being a relatively easy kill here, the Sunstrike misses, even a Spirit Breaker charge would have been pretty decent there, but instead what ends up happening is just a really easy pick off overall for Monkey King and making good use of the fact that they have vision of the supports at this point. Now straight after this he ends up seeing that the two supports are after diving on mid lane, he casts his ulti here and stunning at the start is really good because these two heroes have like very good crowd control. And you end up seeing that Wukong's command, he, he actually gets to like maximize the damage. CM is after teleporting bottom 
and Monkey is gonna go and try and kill her now. And he ends up jumping in here onto CM. The Sunstrike misses again, but Skyrat was waiting behind. And CM even has her ulti. And Monkey was timing his stun to wait for, to cancel CM's ult, which is pretty much the right thing to do because she gets so much armor now from her ult. And overall, that's what the support should have been doing to save Sniper, not just to save CM in that scenario. But what's happening is that Monkey King's in the trees here, and if the Sniper throws in a shrapnel here, he's pretty much like guaranteed dead because Viper has like a root and stuff. But it ends up being that Monkey King goes straight down to Sniper and very quickly cleans up Sniper and Skyrat. So very good initiation here. Really good placement to ulti and really punishes the Viper's committed position forward. And even Ray King's getting found now. And they don't even have wards in this location. This ends up being just a relatively good punishment of the enemy's position overall. So you end up seeing here Viper's used his Nether Toxin combo. <laughs> Spirit Breaker destroyed the tree that stunned Monkey King so he can't like respond to this. Now what was actually like a really nice movement here is he went on the Skyrat and instead of jumping into the Nether Toxin he goes to the side and gets the stun out on two heroes. That was in my opinion like the most impressive thing I've seen so far in this replay. And he ends up like jumping up into the tree so he gets kind of cocky now and he's going on Sniper here and Ray King's stun is pretty long duration he really underestimated it and also getting stuck into the shark now and Sniper ends up getting the kill on Monkey so that might not seem so bad but when you actually look to see it's 930 gold that's a kind of a throwing play and really greedy so again he's in the trees here and again if Sniper throws in a shark now anywhere here it's potentially like really bad for him and he knows where Skyrat is he's showing himself to Skyrat here Ends up getting the kill. Luckily no one else was there to follow up. Sniper got his ulti off here. He's just about getting away here. He doesn't have BKB either at this point. He's getting quite lucky here the fact that he isn't getting caught. Maybe Sniper's shrapnel. Will there be anything? Monkey King throws out the ult and manages to pick off the Sniper. And there's even other stuff like where the enemy didn't really react properly. Like that was a pretty risky play overall. Especially with the fact that he doesn't have BKB yet. So here he ends up getting focused down again by Rod of Asos plus Skyrat's ulti. These are not great initiations here. So these plays are pretty detrimental overall. If we have a look at like the gold, look at Radiant, how much they've come back in the past couple of minutes. And then if we have a look at experience, it's a massively in the other way. He's got a BKB and now on the courier. Yet it's still not here yet. He commits to go high ground a little bit early. If you don't see it a little bit too much. But now he's here going on Ray King. The courier just comes in the middle of the fight. And <laughs> Sniper is focused on by the Monkey King. He uses BKB now. He's committing really hard. And his team have to follow up on this now. So Monkey King is trying to get out now. Which is probably a good choice. And getting out of base would be a good idea. But instead he's like a mad hot headed Monkey King. That runs back in. Even if he threw out the stun there. He probably could have stunned Ray King killed him and CM sniper gets hooked here but either way look at what's happening the rest of monkey king's team dies because he committed so hard but the enemy is now in Roche yet he's not aware of the, he's kind of aware now he sees the nether toxin particle effect which is basically like a bug I guess you can see the enemy team invoker sunstrike maybe big monkey king ult come out here this could be a game winner Let's see what happens. Viper gets stunned. Ray King goes down. Now Sniper's not being caught here. Sniper needs to be focused. And he walks into Monkey King ulti. Sniper does. So they can see Sniper. And they end up getting the rush. So that was a really nice counter initiation there. It wasn't perfect. It could have gotten really bad as well. And he didn't have to commit his BKB either. So now they can decide to go high ground. CM is after getting picked off here. If you look at Monkey King's camera. It's really bad angle overall. He uses his ult here and Ray King ends up dying inside of it. Now he doesn't see Sniper yet. You can see that Sniper is pretty obviously attacking in this fight. Viper somehow died but Monkey King did not see any of that happening. Now at the same time Monkey King just jumps down on Sniper. Very easy kill and the reason why that's such an easy kill is because Sniper's itemization is so bad. He went a Lincoln Sphere <laughs> instead of a Four Staff. This is really stupid. But this was a game up where they were stomping really hard early on. Monkey King started throwing and literally they only just about managed to win this game. 
Now we're looking at an immortal rank 6 Monkey King and he's playing the safe lane and it's a Legion and Earthshaker that are going to be off lane against him and Pangolier is joining in to contest this rune and very quickly Monkey King decides to back off from this and pretty smart decision here. Now this ends up being a relatively basic stuff going on the very first creep wave but what ends up happening here is that the Earthshaker goes and cuts the creep wave like this. Now Monkey King is not aware of this yet and then sees it on the mini map and he moves his camera to check to see what Earthshaker is doing. That's pretty good overall but what he ends up knowing now is that he's going to get double waved at the same time. Now what ends up happening when there's a lot of creeps that build up like this regardless of how it happens. If you stand in the one same position you'll actually end up taking more damage because the creeps are the same as like actual heroes. They can't attack and move at the same time. You can only choose to do one action or the other. So this ends up like overall reducing the amount of damage that he takes and even Legion here is like pulling the creeps again. So he's completely being like messed up with his creeps here and he's reacting quite good to this. So now he's totally out of regen but he's got boots of speed now. What he hasn't done yet is really dodge any spells from Legion Commander and Legion keeps using her Q down on Monkey every single time and you end up seeing here now she uses it again and he gets like taking damage. These are like relatively small things that could pretty much like make him take less damage in lane and he has got like taken a lot of harass and a lot of the harass has actually been coming from creeps because if you think about it Earthshaker doesn't actually do that much like passive harass in lane it's the creeps that he's tanking that's constantly making him take damage. Now what's important here to note and I see this happen a lot in matches is that people don't buy extra tangos. This match he's bought now 9 tangos and this is how you pretty much sustain in lane if you're not a hero that buys something like a ring of health. This is relatively important to note and I would heavily encourage people to do this a little bit more. So as the bounty rune was spawning his support couldn't contest the rune. He kills the range creep before he goes and kills the rune to ensure that he doesn't miss out on that experience and when he comes back Shaman actually was last sitting the creeps and got all the experience during that time. So buying these three tangos is so buying these three tangos ends up being really effective because the fact that the shrine is not being used and he can use that later as support can. But also notice how he has to commit really hard there just to get those four stacks up on Legion Commander. In comparison to the Ray King last game, Legion makes Monkey King work really hard for this. Now he is low health now but he's bought phase boot so he feels a little bit more confident in lane here and he still has a full boundless strike ready and He's being here come the gank squad <laughs> and they've used all their good spells now so they probably can't commit to get this kill and Monkey King does manage to get away here. Now he has used his tangos here and these tangos are what allows him to regen back up. A nice shackle here which allows him to keep going for this and he has a third stack and disarm coming from the fog from Pangolier swashbuckle. Now the fisher and he gets no damage from Rolling Thunder because of the mischief and bount luckily bounces him over the Fisher. But he is cold feated now and he does get finished off. So regardless of what timing he used on mischief there, he was probably going to die either way. A little bit too far of a commitment but also someone pinged out that Pangolier was missing. It's kind of like something that's relatively small and he didn't notice that was happening. If you look through the replay at the earlier parts, he never really moves his camera to the other lanes and he wasn't really aware who even the mid player was. Likely, he probably even forgot at that moment. So Monkey King's gone for like a few opportunities to try and get a kill. But he really needs to be where his team is in order to get a kill. Because this legion has gone back into the jungle or gone for kills in other lanes. And literally no one's bottom. And Monkey King can effectively get more gold faster and more experience by actively getting kills. And here straight away you end up seeing the AA is level 4. And it's almost 10 minutes and AA will get a Tome of Knowledge and reach level 6. So this ends up being a really weak spot for AA right at this point. And in combination with Bounty Hunter this is a relative easy kill to get and that in some cases could have been bait but because of the fact that they have vision on mid lane of the enemy you can literally see that there wasn't going to be an easy counter initiation there from the enemy team. So now he's picked up an Echo Saber 14 minutes and over the past 5 minutes or so he's pretty much been heavily prioritizing farming and getting this Echo Saber timing at a pretty decent time. So now he's 
full mana, full health, and searching for kills. With this Echo Saber, he's able to go on Pangolier. However, now Pangolier has his Rolling Thunder, and making this is like a mid lane Pangolier. He's making him commit his ulti just to be able to escape from a, a potential death here. Now, Monkey's still going searching for the kill, and he used two attacks on a creep there just so the creep wouldn't have vision of him. He used his ult up here onto the high ground and trying to get as much damage as possible. He f what ends up happening here is he just walks out of his ult here and he couldn't get around the tree line. If he ended up cutting this tree in this position right here with his quelling blade he would have been able to get through but he never ended up doing that even a slightly different position of his ulti. But either way at this point he's committed way too hard and pretty much dies in that position. Now even though they had vision there it's pretty much like literally trying to fight their whole team with two players so it's not that great of a decision to make there. So when Monkey King responds he goes bottom and goes after this Pangolier. The Pangolier is just like farming here and even though they're not going to get the kill here forcing Pangolier again to use his Rolling Thunder to escape. That's a Rolling Thunder that he could have been using to try and get a kill somewhere. It slows down the pace of the enemy and their ability to go and find kills in other places of the map and pretty much it helps your teammates overall. So now Monkey King's farming in top lane playing aggressive here and this time his teammates are almost in position he's waiting for them to get closer before going in. He's now used his ulti a little bit in a safer position after the enemy uses like critical spells and then goes in once his team is here to back him up. So this ends up being a tower also secured from this. Even though his teammate died there, it's more important that he's picking up the kills and working with his teammates this time. So you see straight away that he's effectively not making the same mistake that he did last time. So Monkey King jumps up in the trees here and knows how it's night time. If the enemy have a ward that's up here on the cliff, where you typically end up having it, which is up here at this point, it's not going to get vision of Monkey King. However, the enemy team actually have a ward here which sees Monkey King directly. Now, if we go back to player perspective again, Monkey King doesn't know any of this. Yet he does know that the position he's in probably doesn't give vision of that ward spot up on the cliff. Yet now there's three heroes here that go in on him. He gets a stun out on three heroes. Luckily, Morphling morphed to uh, Earthshaker there and threw out a Fisher, which pretty much stuns three heroes and luckily if he wasn't so far ahead on network, you end up seeing that both Morphling and Monkey King are pretty much near the top two. It ends up being kind of like lucky that he would have died if he wasn't so far ahead. So here now the enemy creeps can see him. When he jumps into the trees, the enemy knows where roughly he's jumped to. So he jumps down out of the trees here. And this is a relatively stupid position to be in because his teammates can't even save him here. And he ends up like just straight up getting picked off. A relatively stupid mistake that's cost 500 gold. So now he's bought a BKB. And notice the BKB timing coming in here now. Just before Rolling Thunder hits him, he actually activates BKB. That's in like four times slow motion. He just about presses that. He also doesn't take any damage from the Echo Slam. And pretty much Legion and Earthshaker get picked off there. So now he's hunting for PL here into the jungle. He uses BKB so his mana doesn't keep getting burnt here. And he misses the stun here. Can his teammates come in? He throws out the armor. But notice how he has 17 stick charges. This is what allows him to regain instant mana. It's basically like saving for your soul ring. Or doing what you do like on Raid King. But these stick charges are really important to continue back fighting once the illusions are cleared. So his team now are just taking Roshan and he's like killing the creeps in the mid lane. And he doesn't really need to be there. He pretty much missed shit. Lava. So his teammates are taking Roshan now and Bounty Hunter is scouting ahead for him. So Monkey King is a really good hero that works with Bounty. Once Bounty can scout someone, Monkey King can follow after, especially with the tree dance talent. And ends up being using BKB here right on time, uh, just before getting hit by Rolling Thunder. And we have an Echo Slam that comes out just before he dies, a Panic Echo. And this is pretty much another kill. So three kills just after Roshan when none of them have buyback. And this is pretty much GG in most cases. It's obvious that Immortal players are much harder to win your games against to give you a harder time to get stacks on your Jinju Mastery. But you also notice this Monkey King executed his game significantly better, especially with how he utilized his tree dance talent of the extra cast range. His BKB timings were really on point as well. 
<laughs> he's even dueling inside in the fountain and winning the 5-2. Pretty impressive overall this game was. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more Dota content like this, make sure you subscribe.